allowed. So you'll just have to approve. All right, so just to prove that. So welcome everyone, happy Friday. I am just to get the, the for the beginning, um, gonna just make sure everyone's muted. Um, and then as we go along with our discussion, you can unmute yourself or I can help unmute you. But welcome to First Friday's Wellness Cafe with Maria and myself. Um, we love doing these with you. Usually the first Friday of the month, we have different wellness topics. And last month was a huge hit with the setting intentions. Um, I think a lot of you were there, but we talked about more about setting an intention um, for the year as opposed to resolutions that tend to fail. Um, or just kind of setting a word for the year, something for you that you were going to focus on that really fired you up, got you excited. Uh, we talked about how oftentimes people set resolutions that um, are too broad. Um, they're not very exciting. Maybe they don't even want to do them, but they feel like they should. And so th it doesn't fire them up. It doesn't make them excited or they go at it for a couple of weeks and then it's done for the, for the whole rest of the year. And that's not something we want to do, right? We want to start small and something that um, really makes us excited and motivated to keep doing. So um, with that being said, if this, if you've kind of been thinking about it, or if you're at our last cafe and you've been doing something since then, we'd love to open up the conversation today. We do have a presentation um, if we need to, we've kind of got like a, a plan, but I wanted to, we wanted to both open it up as more of a conversation and see kind of where everyone was at from the last month. So I would love if you can unmute yourself or if you just want to type it in the chat, I'd be happy to read it out for you. Um, Maria and I also had a couple of things that changed or it kind of sparked something in us in the last month too. So um, we can also share that, but we'd love to open up the floor and welcome everyone that's just popping in. Happy Friday. So if you missed it, we're sharing from the last one, an intention for the year, or if you've got like a word for the year or something you've been, some health goal that you've been working towards and how, how that's been going for you. And don't be shy. We're all friends here. I'll go. <laughs> okay, Andy, perfect. Um, so I, I guess for me, I finally getting close to feeling a lot no more normal. So it's been a real, um, my strength and my number of classes are much higher than they've been. So that's been good. I still have some issues with my knee where it's, I can't do certain things. Uh oh, I think she froze on my end because you all are still moving. <laughs> okay, Andy, if you can hear me when, when you come back and you're unfrozen. Thanks, but so that, so, okay, am I frozen still? Nope, you're good. I don't know why it's been doing that a lot, um, freezing up, and then it goes away. <laughs> so kind of like life. Um, so what was, I don't know where I started or where I, where you guys heard oh, just getting stronger okay just getting stronger has been a thing being more um just coming a little back to normal for me and my normal is, is normality is coming to better so that so that's been helping and I, I just have a knee issue but it's getting that's getting better too so um I guess so and also my big thing this this um, intention for this year is to have more community because it's been um, last two years has just been really isolated. <laughs> so that's my big thing for this year. So that's what I have to say. <laughs> that's perfect. Thank you for sharing. And it sounds like you had set those intentions and then you've been following through with them by showing up to classes and signing up for connect and yeah, to the yeah, it was interesting too because I one of the things I put up is I wanted more to meet more people. And actually, last week I met this lady and we had we had um, coffee and it was just like gosh, things are coming to what I what I've been asking for. So that's been good. Yeah. That's so exciting, and I think we all know how amazing that is when you put it out there or you say it or you write it down. It starts to happen, right? And yeah. there are steps you have to take. You can't just hope the universe just magically does it for you, but that's really exciting, Andy. I'm happy for you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. So would anyone else like to share? We've got some, some comments in the chat I can read, but if anybody would like to unmute themselves and share intention, a goal they set for themselves. And remember, these can be small. It doesn't have to be something big. It could be that you 
woke up five minutes earlier every day, or you step outside and get sunshine for five minutes. They don't, I think oftentimes people think they have to be these huge goals that are like lofty that you have to go and reach, but it can be something small, right? It's those little things that make the big difference over time. So maybe it's just something small that you've done. Okay, I'll read some of these. Um, okay, Andy, Marcia said that uh, you live in the same state and you should get together. I like that. Yes, she's nodding her head. Yes. Fran said her word is calm, which I find is difficult to attain. And if you have your word, right, and you've got the word, also, how, how are you channeling that or how is it going? If you found this word, what steps are you taking to get there? Um, Karen's is patience particularly with her kids and she struggles with it daily. Karen, I feel you. It's hard. It's just, you just keep, you just keep doing it. And Amanda's, her word for the year is me. Amanda, do you want to share? <laughs> I love when you share. I was trying to be quiet for once. Um, no. um, yeah, I just said my word for the year. I have a friend that um, paints words for a hundred of her of friends every year. Um, and so she's been painting my word of the year. I think this is the fifth year. So, um, I don't have it yet, but, um, my word is me. And when I was just thinking about it, like, I feel like there's so many little things that I want, like intentions I want to set or things I want to do, but it all comes back to just thinking, being more selfish and thinking more of what's best for me. Um, when to say yes or no, like when to make a decision saying yes or no to my kids. Um, working out, me time, food, um, all those things. And yeah, I just, um, I just kind of try to always have it in the back of my mind that like, what is this decision, um, serving me well, because if it is, then it's also serving my household well, which I think sometimes is our focus, right? We just end up doing everything for our kids or significant others or all the people around us. And then, but like by being selfish, it's also serving them. So, um, and selfish, like I'm using that in a good way, right? That it's not, it's just, um, so yeah, I have some days where at the end of the day, I'm like, yeah, you didn't do that. You probably should have said no earlier. You should have just sat down for those 10 minutes. So kind of using it to reset myself each day too. So, so can I say something to, to Amanda? So I, I was there you know, when, I, when my kids were young and um, I stopped using the word selfish because I felt that it was too negative on myself. And so I, I made a, a real commitment to not use that word. Yeah, self-care is, is a lot, yeah. Um, and, you know, in our chat, in our pressures group, you know, you talked about me and, and, you know, my, my husband always says, if, you know, if, if, if mom's not happy, everybody's not happy. So, <laughs> so you have to be happy because that makes the family happy and stop saying selfish, even though you I said know. it. I actually <laughs> don't usually say that word. So then today when I said it, I'm like, that really does sound weird. Like, I feel like I need to justify it. So I'm going to change it. Cause I don't usually use that word. So thank you. I know you don't. <laughs> Yes, that was a good point, Betsy. And right, self-care, like you have to have all those things in order to like have a balanced life, right? Like drinking water, getting good sleep, eating good food, taking time for yourself. Like those aren't self, it's, that's just taking care of yourself so that you can function and be healthy. And, you know, when I'm sure a lot of you know, like when something gets out of whack, you have to check in with all those things and say, I need to adjust something. Um, and it's definitely not selfish, but it's hard because not everyone sees it that way or they don't have a supportive spouse or I don't know, something that throws it off where they, they feel like they can't do those things, but it is so important. So Amanda, I'm so happy for you. Absolutely. All right. Um, so Lorraine put in there that she's going to bed early and trying to get more consistent sleep. It's a struggle daily, but you just have to take it day by day. It is hard. And that's another thing to kind of think about. If you have your word, I'd love to hear about this too. If you have your word, but for some reason you just like can't get there, like what, what do you think those first steps would need to be? Like those tiny little first steps. Like if you say, okay, the word this year, the word is me, but then what, then what? Like, what does that mean? 
Like what first step do you take? Does that mean, okay, I'm going to show up to 6 a.m. class every day? Does that mean I'm going to prep my lunch? Does it mean I'm going to take 10 minutes, right? You have to have those little steps that actually help you get, fulfill that word or get you to that, that eventual goal. Um, yeah, and Linda chimed in, self-care helps you be your best self. Absolutely. Yes, so I love these. So who else? I love hearing from you and it might inspire or kind of um, spark something in someone else. So that's why we like hearing from, from others. I can I go there? Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, either Sarah or Lori. Go ahead, Sarah. Okay. <laughs> um, so it's not really my word for the year, but I'm, I mean, I do have a word, but gratitude. Um, I'm really centering myself in gratitude. And so one thing I've been doing consistently every morning is I write down five things or people that I'm grateful for. Um, you know, and sometimes they're big things, sometimes they're little things. And I just think it really helps keep perspective, like even when it's a hard day and, you know, obviously I'm going through a lot, but there's always things to be thankful for. And there's always, I like to always say like, not every day's a good day, but there's something good about each day. Um, you know, and so I think that's been, it's just been really helping me, you know, stay positive. And, and it's almost like once you start centering yourself with that gratitude, it's like, you start noticing it more and more and more. Um, so, and it's cool to like write it down, you know, and then go back, you know, and I can read through like, oh yeah, like I had forgotten about that or that. So. Those are, so, yeah, those are some powerful words about finding something good in each day. Um, and gratitude is powerful. You may not think of that as something like as part of your health, because I think we so often get focused. I think at VFIT, we're so good about the balance and like the wellness wheel and about more than just it being like food and exercise. Those are just two pieces of the puzzle. But gratitude um, is a big one. And like Andy said, with connection, that social connection with others is huge. That's all part of your health and well being. So um, I love that you're sharing things that are kind of just outside of what you're typical, um, you may typically think of as things for your health. So absolutely gratitude. And uh, Sarah, I love that. I bought the compass and I'm using those daily. If anyone else has it, they, she kind of mm. left like three bullet points for each day and I didn't know what to do with them. So I just jot a little something down in there every day. And I thought, oh yeah, that'll be cool to look back at. And sometimes it's just my kid's name, like Brooks. I just like, I'm thankful for him today. So um, just good little reminders. So. Thanks for sharing, Sarah. Uh, Sarah said um, said something that just uh, triggered something that I've started doing with my kids when they were little, and now I do it with my grandkids. And um, you know, kids can have a hard. I'm a teacher. I mean, a retired teacher. But anyway, so I've worked a lot, lot with kids, and um, so what I um, liked to do, and my kids were very receptive to it, is um, when I would pick them up from school or they'd come in from school, um, I would um, end up saying, um, so tell me about the best part of your day. And so they would share, you know, as opposed to like, what did you do today? How was your day? And so I would say, what was the best part of your day today? And then they would tell me and I'd say, uh, was there any bad parts, the worst part of your day, you know, and they would share and then it would come into a conversation. Um, it would develop in, and I do it now with my grandkids um, when I don't see them every day, but when I do see them or talk, you know, my oldest is 13 now, my oldest grandchild. So, and the 10 year old, they're very good at our, even the eight year old is very good at articulating um, about um, their day. And so I think that helped foster, it helps foster a spirit of gratitude and self-reflection of, um, there's a lot of growth that can happen when you take that time to reflect on things that happened in your day, to process them. And the best way of doing it is to speak it out. Um, so anyway, that just, uh, Sarah, that just triggered me to share that. So if that helps anybody. So you haven't seen any of it. I think Maria's kind of 
Here, I'm going to just you real quick. <laughs> um, there we go. Linda, that was such a good share. And I've heard that before of asking more of a specific question. So it's not so like general. And I do agree with you of um, that way they can really see the good parts. I love that starting there. Um, and I, I absolutely agree. So thank you for that tip. I always love when people share these things that are teachers and things that I don't always think of. It's helpful. So thank you, Linda. That's Super fast spin on that. If you find, I have one that can go down like the negative rabbit hole. So the worst part of your day was hard at our house. Like I, I was like, something needs to change. So the, we rephrased it to what is something you would change about your day and how would you change it? So if anyone's looking for something that helped them reframe, like, oh, I wish this would have gone differently, but it still happened. But you know, so that's another, I love that though, Linda. And that's good for us too, right? <laughs> like, how would I have changed this instead of just like stewing on it and complaining? Um, so I love that. That was a great share. Yes, some parents are using that. Yes, and Tracy did it with her kids too, the highs and the lows. Very cool. All right, anyone else? Intention, a goal, a small habit that you've started that you're proud of? Uh, can I go? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm back inside, it's great. Uh, so this one is interesting. So last year I did two words. I did flow and connection. And there was different um, parts that, you know, leveled down from that. But um, it was kind of interesting because I wasn't really sure what my word was going to be this year, but I've been really still focused on the connection. So I've been meeting with my sister who lives, uh, I guess she's like two and a half hours away, but we've been meeting in the middle and meeting for brunch. Um, it's coming down to more multiple times a month and it's been really great. So then this week when we met, we were talking and we just started talking about our, our homes becoming a haven because I had posted about it in social and she shared this whole system that she's been using for months about like a process to manage her house and keep it clean and tidy without being overwhelming. And that's been a big weak spot. My whole life is that I'm not that good at that part of being a human. <laughs> And so uh, I downloaded the app she's been using and it's only been a few days, but it's been life changing. And I already feel like I appreciate my home and it does feel like a haven to me. And uh, it's really cool because it was like the other word kind of brought this word. So my word for this year is haven and I'm going to keep rocking with it. So um, it's called Fly Lady. It's just like this whole thing. So um, I can share about that a little bit more in the um let me send out the blog and the follow up email to everybody, but it's kind of cool. So it's, yeah, I needed a system. I had no system ever. And so that is my word is Haven. And I'll share more about that later. That is so cool. I've never heard of that before. I'm so curious now. They have an app for everything. <laughs> That's very cool. Awesome, Maria. I'm excited for you. Yes, other people are saying they need this type of support. So because that can add to the stress, right? When you feel like your home is just like a mess and then you are a mess because your house is a mess. It's so, it just trickles. Yeah, it's hard to balance it all, right? It's hard, but by finding ways to make it easier or get help in other areas. If you know, like I'm taking on too much for myself, I can't handle all this. Who, what, what areas can you um, start to get support in? And I think, oh yeah, look at Amanda. She, there's the link right there. <laughs> What areas can you get support with that? So these are so great. Who else? Thank you for that, Maria. I know there's something in there. Lori, did you want to go? Sorry, I'm using my phone. I'm not used to my phone. Um, I was just going to say my word has been uh, for this year is be present. So I... Um, have been trying to be on my phone less. Um, you know, meal times with my husband, I ask that we don't get our phones out so that we can, you know, focus on each other. We work together, so we're together all day long. So sometimes at meals, we're like, yeah, yeah, I've seen you all day. But um, I've just noticed that it's, it kind of just, irritates me <laughs> if he's on his phone while we're trying to eat dinner. I, you know, it's just a meal. So I've been trying to do that. And then um, with my grandkids, I've been really trying to just, you know, sometimes when 
you have your kids and you're busy and you're just trying to do a bunch of stuff and they're talking and talking, but I've just been really trying to stop and, you know, look them in the eye and really listen to them and what they're talking about. And I just feel like it just makes them feel more important. And that's how I want them to feel because they are important to me. So I, um, that's just what I've been trying to do. So be more present. And I just try to put that in, you know, all the areas of my life um, as best as I can and just try to keep it at the forefront of my mind. So that's what I'm working on. That's a hard one, Lori, right? <laughs> it's, it's my, that's my same word of the year and uh, it's so important, but I love that. And it does make people feel really special when you're present, even if you see them all day, like your husband, mm -hmm. <laughs> still being present without the phone. That's the rule at our house too. And that's a good one. Yeah. I want to say that I'm on the same page there too, because, because me and my husband are together all day long. And sometimes I'm just doing something he's talking and I was like, I didn't even like look up or <laughs> I'm like half there, like the word present. And it's like, so rude. And so, <laughs> so I noticed that too. And it was like, and I'm, yeah. No, it's just not right. So we're making a point of, of doing that too. And, you know, making him aware of it too. And it's better. Yeah. It's better just to have that, like that eye contact, like Lori was saying, and really pay attention instead of like, God, I even came up to him one time and said, you know, earlier, I know you were talking to me and I didn't even look at you. I'm so sorry, you know? So I'm really aware of that now. So those phones, especially if it's, Winter and you can't get out, so you're there just on your phone, just doing nothing, you know, going down some rabbit hole that you really don't care about. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so connect is a, a good one present for me. Uh, I want to connect with um, some outside community. I've been here for three years and haven't really connected with anybody close by because of COVID. <clears throat> We've had some um, block parties like outside not last year, but this year. And there's just a couple of people that I could connect with. So get together with them. And <clears throat> cause all my friends are in the Bay area, like three hours away, except for my niece, Kathy and you know, my, my friends slash, you know, uh, relatives like that. But so I want to connect with some people around here to take walks with them instead of by myself. My husband will take walks with me, but that's important to me too. Cause that makes me feel so much better, you know, like, just does makes me feel alive <laughs> so that's all i'm kind of agreeing with everybody out there with everybody that's connected yeah okay where do you that's live all. where do you where do you live in pioneer uh oh, up, okay yeah yeah where do you live betsy fremont uh fremont the yeah uh, yeah i consider you my buddy on uh on face on this zoom though because you're always with the nine o'clock class i'm always looking for you Yep, me too. <laughs> yeah, you're my class buddy. <laughs> I know, I look for you too. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, and I'm going to be looking for Fran and dancing. <laughs> I love it, Evelyn. That was so honest. Um, and I think a lot of us could relate to that, to many of the things that you said. So yes, thank you for sharing those with us. And who else would anyone like to share or does anyone kind of feel stuck like they wanted to kind of set an intention or set a new habit, but they just felt like I don't even I don't even know. I don't know where to go. I don't know where to go with this. You want to chat, Fran? I was going to talk to uh, who was it that's getting a habit of going to getting up earlier because I really want to get up earlier but I find it difficult to go to bed earlier to get up earlier so was it wasn't Linda who was it it was um it was Lorraine oh I was wondering how she prepped herself for that because usually your body gets into a mode of going to bed at a certain time waking up at a certain time well, what would be the benefit for you of like, is that something you feel like you have to do or you want to do? Is there some reason you feel like you need to shift? I, I, I want to, because I sleep in almost every morning and I can, I can set my alarm to get up for a meeting or a class. And I don't, then I just turn the 
alarm off and go back to bed. But now um, uh, Valerie and I are going to Arizona together before Dave comes for, and she goes to bed at nine and gets up for the early morning classes. So I thought maybe that would be a good start for me is just go to bed when she goes to bed, you know? But it's just real difficult, I think, to change your pattern. It is. Sarah, did you want, did you have, yeah, there you go. Yes, I have a tip for you, Fran. Um, well, I have more tips about the going to bed, but when you said something that, um, how you, you'll turn your alarm off in the morning and go back to sleep, um, because that used to be me for so long. And I finally, um, cause I use my phone as my alarm. So I, it's not next to my bed. So it's like across the room and it was, I mean, it literally has changed my life because the alarm goes off. I, it forces me to get up to turn it off and then I'm out of bed and then, you know, I don't crawl back into bed. So that might be worth trying. Yeah. Because I also, I find that the alarm on your phone is soft. It's, I haven't, maybe I just haven't found the right um, tune, but I can, I can sleep through it. I need a big alarm clock. And your body probably needs a chance to get into a new rhythm. Like right now you're, it's hard to go to bed because you slept in. So you're not probably not tired. So as that shifts, you know, if you start getting up early, you do get more tired early. So, um, but I do, I love Sarah's idea. Yeah. That's and you could even just scoot it up by a few minutes. You know, I mean, hours probably seems like a little bit too much, right? You're probably not going to be ready for bed two hours early. If you normally go to bed at like 11. So maybe you just bump it up a little bit each time and just try to get into that new routine. Okay, who else? We've got a few minutes left. I, I was just wondering, Fran, do you drink coffee or anything at night? No, I yeah. that no. would that would be dead for me. Okay, me too. Coffee. <laughs> me me too. So I was wondering if there was some stimulating yeah. you or something. That... My husband can drink coffee all day and in through the night and it doesn't bother his sleep one bit. Yeah, I know people like that too. Yeah, yeah. Do you watch TV at night? Yes. Stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the light. Eileen just blunt. Yeah, stop it. <laughs> no, I've, I've never been. What is it that even Ara, Ayurveda tells you? Is it blue glasses? Yeah, but even that, I would take a book and I would read for an hour. Yeah. And I I tend to sleep better because I also have those. I'll be up on and off all night, especially if I've got had the TV on. So I would suggest an hour or so before you want to go to sleep, take a book and read some magazine, whatever it is, stay off of any kind of electronics. Mm. See if that helps. Try it for a little yeah. while. Mm -hmm. Do you have a fitness watch? Uh, my zone? Well, oh. no, like I, I have, have a Fitbit and it, it has a it. silent alarm. So it, it the silent alarm vibrates on your wrist. Oh. And it's really hard to go back to sleep after that. Really? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. And it's harder to turn off because you actually have to, you know, fiddle with your device. So, like my Fitbit, the alarm. So it, it, the thing vibrates, and it seems to, for me, it wakes me up much more gently. But it also makes me awake because it keeps going. And. I mean, I've never, I, when I set the alarm, I have a radio, clock radio by my bed and I set it really loud and I trained myself as a kid to get up and get out of bed. But also adding the silent alarm on times when I'm really tired, it really makes me not go back to sleep. Um, um, Tra it's called Tracy, I meant Lauren. Lauren, yes. does our Apple watches have that? They do. I don't use it, but my husband does. Oh, I'll tr I'm going to try that because that means I have to sleep with a watch on. So, <laughs> really, so but these are all really, these are all very good tips. Yes. Yeah. Fan so we're going to check in on you next month, how it's going. Okay. 
if you set an okay. alarm on your phone and you have your watch, your watch is paired with your phone. Yeah. You'll put the alarm on your phone, on your arm. Yeah. And actually you can have it both. I sometimes have it with just vibrating or it can, it can also be singing at you. And that's a pain in the neck until you get up and turn it off. <laughs> I do have the birds that for my nap in the daytime. <laughs> I know you're going to say, well, that's why you don't sleep at night. No, but no, no. Sometimes I just have to have a nap. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with a nap. I'm just, I just know for me, when I watch TV, I don't sleep as well as when I read, choose to read for an hour before I go to bed instead. And the, the watch, you can set an alarm um, from your phone on for your watch to, to turn mm -hmm. on. Okay, and I'll try that. It, That's really helpful, all of that. We're gonna get you to bed and at those early classes. Remember when you'd go to 5.30 in the morning? <laughs> that was just- I'll have you back there in no time. <laughs> It's in the morning. I'm glad I, I live on the East Coast. It's in the evening that I'm sorry I live on the East Coast. It's, you know. <laughs> well, these so have been worry. fabulous. Would anyone like to share anything else before we sign off or put something else out there? Okay, anything else from you, Maria? No, that's it. Um, we wanted to thank everybody. We wanted to go a little free form with this session and, uh, you know, get this kind of conversation going. So thank you guys so much for coming. And then uh, two things next, next month, we'll go back to the typical format probably, but also if you did enjoy this conversational format, uh, it's very much like our connect meeting. So if you're not in connect and you kind of liked hearing from different members, uh, that's very much a very similar experience. Uh, and we host those on Thursdays and Sundays. And then also Lauren, do you have any room for signature series clients this month or are you full? I do for February. I have a few, uh, probably like a couple because we'll be out for part of the month, but a couple more people. Yeah. All right. Great. So if anyone wants to work with Lauren, uh, she does nutrition uh, as a registered dietitian. So she's got room. I've got room for two more as well. So if anyone does have any goals that are fitness related, um, any something physical like push ups or posture, um, feel free to reach out too. So thank you ladies so much for joining. And again, uh, we'll send a recap email, post this up on the blog, and I'll share more information about the fly lady system I'm using for my house. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks Thank so much. Happy Friday, everyone. Thanks Lauren, for all of your Tell Betsy to stay on. I want to tell her something. Okay. <laughs> I think she heard you. Okay, I heard you. <laughs> I know, but it's so I'm just going to stop our recording, but you, you two can chat. You just want to tell somebody something.